Hi, and welcome to part three of the AB SciX QTRAP video series. In this video, we will give you an overview of how to set up MRM EPI scans for your routine testing methods. It's much easier than you think. Let's get started. First things first, let's just briefly explain Information Dependent Data Acquisition, or IDA, and how it works and some basic parameters that you should understand. The basic idea behind IDA is that you set an intensity threshold in your method, and when an MRM is detected and exceeds that intensity threshold, an EPI scan is triggered. Basically, this just means that the EPI scan acquisition is dependent on the detected MRM information. In the EPI scan, all fragments from the parent are trapped in Q3 and scanned out, providing you with a full MS-MS fragmentation spectrum associated with your parent peak. During your EPI scan, you want to make sure the QTRAP data acquisition parameters are optimized to get the best possible data. The two parameters of most interest are dynamic fill time and dynamic background subtraction, or DBS. The dynamic fill time is the time allowed for the trap to fill with ions before they are scanned out for detection. If there is a high ion count, a shorter fill time is activated, while if there is a low ion count, a longer fill time is activated. DFT should always be activated in an EPI experiment. Dynamic fill time is data acquisition optimization on the fly and will ensure the best quality spectra for your experiments. Dynamic background subtraction, or DBS, automatically subtracts background from your chromatogram so you get more reliable EPI scans triggered, particularly when you have co-eluding MRMs. DBS should always be activated to get the highest quality data. Now that you know the basics, let's go to Analyst and create our EPI method. It actually only takes six easy steps to transition your MRM method to an MRM method that triggers IDA EPI. Step 1. Open your MRM method in Analyst. Step 2. Add your IDA criteria by selecting your MRM experiment. Then right-click and select Add IDA Criteria Level. You'll need to set up your first level IDA criteria, and these are our recommended settings. Select to monitor one to two of the most intense peaks per cycle. Activate DBS, and set your IDA triggering threshold to 500 counts per second. This just means that any MRMs that exceed this intensity will trigger an EPI spectrum. And finally, set your Exclude Former Target Ions selection to Never. This just means that you will always trigger an EPI even if the peak had been previously detected in your chromatogram. You can leave the mass tolerance setting as the default. Step 3. Add EPI by selecting your MRM experiment, then right-click and select Add Experiment. Change the scan type to EPI, then specify your mass range and scan rate. Our recommended settings would be a mass range of 50 to 800 Daltons, which covers the full mass range of compounds in this method, and a scan rate of 10,000 Daltons per second to ensure fast data collection for best quality MS-MS spectra. Step 4. Click the Edit Parameters button to specify your declustering potential, collision energy, and collision energy spread. We recommend a DP of 75 volts for this particular method because that value is near the average DP for all of the compounds. We recommend the collision energy of 35 volts with an energy spread of 15 volts. This just means that three different collision energies will be used for fragmentation to give a more comprehensive MS-MS spectrum. Step 5. Go to the Advanced MS tab and verify that DFT is active. Step 6. Since we set up our IDA to monitor the two most intense peaks per cycle, we will need to duplicate the EPI experiment to cover both. To do this, right-click on your EPI experiment and select Copy This Experiment. Finally, save your method and you're ready to go. It's that simple. Just one tip about running IDA EPI particularly if you're running methods that contain many co-eluting MRMs, like very large pesticide screens, for example. For best peak shapes and data quality, it's always best to create two acquisition methods, 
one basic MRM method, and one MRM method with added IDA EPI. We suggest you run your mixes that contain your target compounds, like standards or matrix spike samples, with your standard MRM acquisition method, no IDA EPI triggers, and run your unknown samples using the MRM IDA EPI method. This will ensure that you get optimal data acquisition for your solvent standards for best quantitation using your MRM data, but still collect your valuable EPI scans for ID confirmation in your unknown samples. Creating your EPI method is easy. Just remember the six steps. Step 1. Open the MRM method. Step 2. Add the IDA criteria. Step 3. Set up the EPI scans. Step 4. Set up your parameters. Step 5. Verify that DFT is active. And Step 6. If you selected to monitor more than one peak, duplicate your EPI experiment, then save the method and you're ready to run samples. We hope this six-step overview is helpful in guiding you to setting up your EPI scanning for your routine testing methods using QTRAP. Tune in to our upcoming videos to get even more details of how to improve your food testing with QTRAP.